Well, good morning, folks. Uh, Jason here from God Conversations. Um, been a, a while since I posted, a few weeks anyway. Um, my reading this morning was from Deuteronomy uh, 10 and 11. And I just want to share with you just some thoughts. Uh, I'm just going to share a couple snippets here. Uh, it says in verse uh, in, in 10 verse 12 through 16, it says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. Behold, to the Lord, uh, behold, uh, to the Lord your God belong heaven and heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them, you above all peoples, as you are this day. Verse 16, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn. Um, later on in Isaiah and Ezekiel, God will say uh, that uh, in the new covenant, God will circumcise your heart and will put his word in you. Uh I want to jump to first uh, to chapter 11 verse 29. And it says, "And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are entering to take possession of it, you shall set the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal." So what is he talking about? Well, in Leviticus and later on in, in Deuteronomy, um God sets out blessings and curses for obedience uh and disobedience. And why does he choose Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal to put these, these curses and blessings on? Well, it's outside of a, of, of a town called Gilgal. These two mountains, they're, they're, uh, the mountains are facing each other, and they're just outside of a town called Gilgal. And you read about Gilgal in the book of Joshua, which is next after Deuteronomy. And why does he choose those two mountains? Well, it chooses those two mountains because of the significance of Gilgal. You see, this generation that is about to take the land, this is the second generation in the, in the desert. Uh, the first generation died. All of them died except for Joshua and Caleb. They were two of the 12 spies that went into the land originally, and they, and they believed that God would allow them to take the land according to God's word, and the other 10 didn't believe. And so that generation died for their lack of belief. So now that second generation was not circumcised. And they, they were circumcised at the town called Gilgal, the whole generation of males. And actually the, the word Gilgal means pile of foreskins. Why is this important? Well, because God's covenant to Abraham was a covenant of circumcision, saying that uh, God will give Abraham land, seed, and blessing. Okay? Uh, and so they were following the sign of the covenant. And God says, put the blessings and curses outside the sign of of the covenant of Abraham. Now, this is still part of the Mosaic covenant, not the Abrahamic covenant, but they're coming in to take the land. Okay? And that is part of the Abrahamic covenant. So now, why am I talking about this? Well, in our modern day Christianity, we follow a me-based uh, religion, if you will. God loves me, God loves me, God loves me. Yes, God loves you. But also, God requires that you love him. And we think that God will love us unconditionally, which he will, if, you're, if you belong to him. But there's stipulations. You cannot lose your salvation, but you can really wreck your relationship with God. And I'm wondering, do we really fear God? 
do we have a real right relationship with God? Because the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of having a right relationship with God is, is genu genuinely fearing God. And God put this right outside, or God told them to put it right outside the place where they were going to uh, remember the Abrahamic covenant. Now, for many Christians, you have repented, you have believed, and you've been baptized. But do we think about how we are supposed to obey God? And a lot of us, I don't think we, we pay much attention to that. We prayed the sinner's prayer. We got baptized. We sometimes go to church. Sometimes watch church online during this time of COVID. But do we genuinely obey God? What are you doing to remember to obey God? That's the question. Anyway, guys, hope I gave you something to think about. Have a great day. Bye now.